All right. So in the last class, we we discussed um, we discussed um, the first chapter. We started with the, of course we are still in the first chapter of of the study, uh, civic and government, and um, I kind of gave an introduction on the various concepts on that civic. Uh, some of the things we we were able to highlight includes definition of terms like civic, government. Okay, so I'm just giving a, a quick recap or a revision on what we did the last class for those of you who are around, so you could um, catch up on what I'll be discussing today. So um, uh, do well to to link up to um, you know go to the link. Um, Telegram channel. I think there, there, this. Um, I sent the video, the recorded version of the class, on Telegram on the WhatsApp platform. So you check it out and see how you go through the last class and understand what the. So a quick revision. Um, the first chapter in social studies or the first topic theme we are going to be discussing in civic education is C in social studies is civic and government, and. At the last class, we find the terms. We looked at civic. We said civic refers to activities, rights, and responsibilities associated with being a citizen of a particular community or nation. So, a civic in civic in civic, we try to um, understand the various responsibilities, the various role and field of a citizen. Okay, so um, we also looked at the term government. Government, and we define government as a system or organization that establishes and enforces policies and regulation within a society. So the government includes the elected officials, administrative bodies, and institutions responsible for decision making and governance. So. Um, then we looked at the various um, elements of government or U.S. government, and we looked at the the of right, democracy, republic, checks and balances, federalism, citizenship, elections. So these are terms that you need to familiarize yourself with um, if you would grasp the the topic on civic education so um so do well do well to check on the various things i mean the video so you can catch up with us uh we we discuss the we discuss the u.s government ability documents that um that that are embedded um and responsibilities, civic participation in the U.S. Yes. And those um, was pretty the brief introductions we did. On under civic and government. So because of time, uh, I don't know if you can still hear me. But if, if you have some of these things I've just mentioned, mute your mic and tell us um, what you think first about civic. When you hear the word civic, what do you think about the word civic? Anybody? Is anybody familiar with the term civic? or the term government can you in your own words can you um discuss what you understand by government when you hear the word government what comes to your mind for me when i hear the word government what comes from my mind is like authority authority those people, okay yeah those who take this decision okay. for the people yeah yeah very good very good um decision uh, authorities those who make decisions for the people 
okay any other person who can who can make an attempt when you hear the word governments what comes to mind Abdul, there is no wrong or right answer. I just want to hear from you, your perspective on the word government. What do you understand? Simin, you can, you can also unmute your mic and tell us. Oh, it seems they are not. It seems they are not. Um, they are not following the class. Okay, so when you hear the word government, we are talking about. We are talking about um, a group, a system, organization that establishes or enforces law. Okay, when we talk about government, we are actually talking about a, a system. We are talking about a group of people. I'm talking about an organization of persons that establish and forces law policies and regulations within a society. Okay, so it includes elected officials, administrative bodies, and institutions responsible for decision making and govern governance. So when you when you hear government, government is as old as old as the human civilization so and we're going to be um a long history historic line so today we're looking at historical and modern government so um like i said Government essential institution that creates, interprets, and first law to maintain order and provide security in the society. Just like uh, one of you just mentioned, uh, when you hear when you hear governments, what comes to mind is uh, the authorities and people, a group of people or persons who make this have of the people or the society. Okay, so when we are looking at under this historical and modern government, I go various type of government, a different form or type of government than is this practice in some other places in the world. Let's say you go to you go to China, you go to Saudi Arabia, you go to some um um to the far eastern continent or eastern countries you'll find out that there is a bit of difference in the kind of government they practice okay that is different for what is practiced in the u.s so it's important for you to understand the dynamics of uh, and the peculiarity that exists in those different form or types of government okay so historically governments is categorized you know basically into four there are more but when you when you look at the various types of government there are they are basically categorized into four so you have the oligarchies you have the monarchy you have the dictator the dictatorship you have the um democracy then lastly you have the republic all right and these are various forms or types of government so i would want us to do something quickly I will explain the various forms of government there are, and then you would um, tell me the country you are joining from and the form or type of government that they, that is practiced in that country. Okay. So first, we are going to look at okay. The oligarchy power is held by a small group. A small group rulers or rulers, a small group of rulers who act in their own interest. So, in an oligarchy, you have a group of powerful people who are coming together to make decisions on that is that is primarily um, 
um, selfish or personalized interest in in whatsoever they are doing. Uh, I don't know if you can still hear me. Please, if you can still hear me, just um, show for me. Yes, we can hear you. But we can't see your presentation. All right, thank you. Oh, you can see my presentation. Wow, all right. So I will just stop presenting and present again. No, we. I'm sorry. Yes, we can see me. I see your presentation. I will see your presentation. Again. Yes, before, Sorry. yes, it was good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you still say it? No. Okay, so I'm coming. Okay, confirm you can say it now. Yes, we can see now. You can see it now. Yes. All right, fine. So, I'm going the various form of or types of government era now coming from the historical to the modern form of government practice. Now, take, you need to note that there are some countries in the world today who still embraces Okay, someone said my voice is breaking. Okay, sorry about that. I get it's network issues. Okay, so, but I think you can hear me clearly now. So, um, coming up from to the modern types of government, and I'm going to be explaining. Um, Your exercise or what we're going to do together is that you would be um, identifying the form of government or type of government that exists in your own country. Maybe not in your form of government. You have small group of people or you have um, a group of rulers who act in their own interests. Okay, so there is this in the in the feudal system. In the, there's something called the feudal system. It's a whole old form of government where landowners, those who own lands, are the one who decides, you know, what happens, you know, in the society, you know, where the society is divided into a class, where you have the peasants and you have the um, landowners and all of that, the feudal, the rulers and all of that. You come to a place in, in such system of government, it is the ruling class or the elite in the society those 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 small group of people who are who are, who are powerful who have a um, large amount of wealth or who you know who come from royal or noble homes you know that decide what happens or dictates what happens in that society and these people do things based on their own interest and that's what we call oligarchy there are many countries in the world today that practice it. In fact, I know of one right now, but I'm not going to say it until um, we do the exercise together. Then number two, you have the monarchy. The monarchy form or type of government. Um, in the monarchy, power is held by a king, a queen, an emperor or empress, or a traditional, a, a, a traditional, sorry, held by a king, an emperor or an empress right so that means a particular leader there is one paramount leader it could be a male or a female in some in some countries or nations you or government there is absolute power
that monarchy is the one that okay is by the power is absolute it is not constrained um the king and queen do as they please you know and no one asks them what you what are you doing nobody has the right to do so okay the king or the queen is the absolute authority in the nation or in the country but in a constitution Monarchy are laws that even the king, you know, is to abide by. That means that the the law is higher than the king. Um. Uh, monarchy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next thing I, I the next one, can you still hear me, please? Not not too well. Sometimes you are breaking up. Hello, can okay, okay. Can you hear me very well now? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, so um I'm talking about the next one, which has to do with dictatorship. So dictatorship is uh another form of arrangement or governmental arrangement that one person that is a single leader has absolute power yeah absolute power he, he control he or she controls the political social and economic aspect the country or the society There's the military dictatorship where somebody seizes power, you know, through military, through, through military might, you know, and through that is con is controlling the political well, the social and economic aspect of the nation. Yeah. And there are some that um were elected, they were elected into power and they have refused to leave power they have refused to they've manipulated all all the aspect of society and therefore they are in there for their elections for every four years ten years six years and in some countries 12 years you know however they they rather elections mean less so it doesn't matter whether election holds for every 10 years every six years as long as they, they as long as they are concerned they will remain in power and even hand over power to their children so that's a form of dictatorship okay so we have another form of um, governance called democracy yeah so democracy just like what is practiced here in the, U in the us it's 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 a form of government citizens executives so you can say they have two forms of democracy you have the direct democracy and you have a representative democracy. Now, in the direct democracy, you have um, people come together and make and vote for a decision. Let's say we have how many are we here? We have eight people here, and these eight people represent the number of people in a nation. Um, hear me or see my presentation. Okay, confirm you can see it now. Can you see my presentation now?
Okay, um, sorry about that. Someone is raising a hand. Go ahead, unmute your mic and say something. Okay, you can see now. All right, thank you. Okay, good. All right, so, um, so I was talking about democracy. Yeah, so I said democracy um, in democracy, citizens exercise power directly. Yeah, they exercise power directly through, through, uh, and I said we have two types of democracy. Is that okay? In direct, in the want to build an aircraft or want to build an airport for for the US okay for Washington, for instance. Now that decision, we can we bring it on the table, and the eight of us we have to vote on the decision. That means um, some people will say we don't need to build an airport now; we rather need to equip the military. Uh, another group say, okay, um, I think we should build the military. So at the end of the day, we take a, a sensor to know how many people um, voted for uh, building. Uh, a, a road, the road, or an airport, and how many people voted for equipping the military? At the end of the day, the people with the highest votes will take the day. So that's that's a form of direct democracy where the people are involved. They are involved personally in their governance. Okay, decision making is collective, not by representatives. But in a representative democracy, you go to the ballot, you vote your representative. So if you're from if you're from um, Illinois, if you are from Chicago, if you're from um, Washington, um, what you do is you 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 pick one person or two persons that will represent you in the table of decision making, and then you say, okay, we the people of Illinois, we are giving our vote to this person, to Mr. Jackson, to be a representative. So Mr. Jackson wields the power of everybody in Illinois and represents everybody in Illinois on the decision table. So such is representative democracy. So when you, when you move from democracy, you have what we call the republic. Yeah. In the Republic, you have what we call the head of state elected by voters. Okay? The only difference between this form of government and democracy uh, is the major difference, rather, between this form of government and a democracy, because a republic is also a, democracy, a democratic state. Just that in a republic, there is no hereditary, that is, you cannot you cannot take give power, you know, to to someone. Maybe you you as the president or you you finish leading the nation, and when you are leaving the seat, you hand over power to um, someone that um, someone that uh, let's say your son. It doesn't work like that in a republic. So. And two forms of democracy. So I'm going to let you. I'm going to um, also talk about the other forms of democracy. They are. You have. We have the parliamentary democracy. So when we come up, when we come under democracy, we have types and we have forms. Now, in the types of democracy, we talked about direct, and we we talked about representative. 
and the form of democracy we are talking about parliamentary democracy where leaders choose leaders are choosing by majority party in parliament so that in the parliamentary democracy the the prime minister is the head of the government the prime minister is the head of the government the prime minister don't forget this very very important all right the prime minister is the one who leads the government uh, then in the presidential democracy you have the president who is the chief executive officer elected by voters separate from legislature limited by the constitution so we, that's what we call the presidential democracy okay so i haven't i haven't explained all these forms and types of government it is now time for you to um for us to to share what um form or type of government is practiced in the place where you come from so how do we go about this um you raise your hands and i would call or even if you don't raise your hand i will call by name yeah i think yeah so i'll call by name you tell us your country then you tell us what type of form of government is practiced in your country so do we understand that Okay, so uh, Anania, you can go ahead, unmute your mic and talk to us. Okay, why wait for Joel? Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it properly, just... <laughs> It's, it's okay. Oh, yes, for me, yes, democracy. Okay, which country? US. US, okay, good. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, yes. Uh, Stanisha? Not here as well. Martinez, you can type if you're in a place where you can talk. Just type, okay? It's fine. Simin, you can type if you're not in a place you can talk. What country are you from? And what form or type of government is practiced? where you come from okay we need to be fast because we we need to we have a lot of practice to do today a lot of practice to do so we need to be very very fast remember it's a preparatory class so some of these questions are very important okay democracy fine okay thank you stanisha um mr gregory you're welcome so we are on we are asking a question tell us what country you're from and what kind of what form or type of government is practiced there oh martinez from florida florida okay Welcome, Martinez. So, democracy. All right. So, we quickly move to... So, you're going to look at the chat at your right hand side. And you will see the country and the form of government, the practice. And then you would... Um, quickly answer the questions uh, on the left. You quickly answer the question on the left. I will be at the chat box to see your answers. So in Canada, you have the practice what they call a federation with constitutional monarch. Yeah. So the British monarch is the chief, is the chief of state, and the head of government 
in Canada is the prime minister. Then in China, you have China is a communist state and the chief of state is the president and the head of government is the premier. In Germany, you have a republic and we have the president and the head of government is the chancellor. And there are two different people, okay? In Iran, you have the theocratic republic. I'll be waiting for some questions later. So theocratic republic and the chief of state is the supreme leader and the head of government is the president. Then in Mexico, you have the federal, it's a the Mexico is a republic, federal republic. Um, so when you hear some countries where you, you um, say the federal, federal republic of this so, so, so country, federal republic of that country, this is um, what you should understand about such systems. So you have the president as chief of state and you have the head of government as the prime minister. In Russia, Russia is a federation. You have the president, you have the premier, okay? But Russia is not a republic. So Saudi Arabia, you have the monarch, the monarchy, okay? In the chief of state is the king and prime minister, and head of government is also the same person, the king and prime minister. All right, so that's the exercise at the other side. Country has a form of government most similar to that of the United States. Which country has a form of government similar to the United States? This question should come cheap for so many of you, um, especially those who are the last class, because we actually did something on that. Okay, so which country has a form of government most similar to that of the United States? A, Canada, B, Germany. See Mexico, Mexico, the Russia. So, your answer at the chat box, please. I would say Mexico. Okay. Yeah. I'm waiting for the others. Yeah, let's go ahead and then, yeah. D, K, Russia. Okay, let's quickly go to question two. We'll do the correction together once once everyone have answered okay okay so person to say which country has the government in which one individual wields the most power yeah which country has the government in which one individual wields the most power so that means power is vested um on just one person china Netherlands, Russia, Saudi Arabia. I would say Russia. 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 Okay. 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 Hmm. Russia.
see Russia. We can't hear you either. Hello. All right. So I can't see any answers on the chat box. We are in see right now. Now. Which is the best meant by calling Iran a theocratic state? A theocratic call Iran a theocratic state. States. These are practice question for your GED. Very, very important. Okay. Um, it, it is a dictatorship. Laws must conform to religious law. Law must conform to constitutional theory. All officials must take an oath of office. So which is the answer? We have to engage more. We have to engage more. Hello. Can you all hear me? Okay, B. Yes, means said B for number three. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess you understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then number four, which of the following types of government will be most likely to hold a free and fair election to choose a leader? Which of the following types of government will be most likely to hold a free and fair election to choose a leader? A, theocracy, B, democracy, C, monarchy, D, oligarchy. So, okay. Uh Good, good. I would good. say I would say democracy. 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 democracy correct. Okay. For the answer too, I don't really hear if you say it was correct or no, but I, uh, it's uh, probably a, a problem of the internet, but I would like to be sure I gave a good answer. Action now together. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Okay. So which country has a form of government most similar to that of the United States? The answer is C, Mexico. So Mexico has the same form of government with Mexico, with the United States. Yeah. So the United States is a federal, is a, runs a federal system and it's also a republic. So it's Mexico. Number two, which country has the government in which one individual wields the most power? That will be Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia um, runs a system of government that is monarchy, a monarchy system of government. In, in, in Saudi Arabia, the 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 shape of the, the king is the is the head of the government. Okay, then you have um, question th three which is the best explanation of what is meant by calling Iran a theocratic state. Yeah, 
the answer is that law must conform to religious law. So the laws of the land, when you go to Iran, it has it has it conforms. That is to say, it follows religious principles. Yeah. So if you go to Iran today, the Allah can tell you um, about the construct or the structure of governance in those area. So number four, you have which of the following types of government will be most likely to hold a free, fair election? Of course, it's not theocracy and it is not monarchy because monarchy, absolute power rests with one person, one individual. And in oligarchy, you have a group of rulers or people who determine what happens and they rule for their own interest. So because of that, the best option is democracy where the people decide and make elect their own leaders okay so yes a round of applause for every one of you who attempted this question and uh, that's another level of knowledge for you okay so we'll go to the next slide quickly Okay, like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of hands-on questions. Um, that is because we started this um, topic since last class and uh, introduction. So this is just a continuation. This is me introducing you with um, using a questioning method in order for you to familiarize with some of the questions you might meet. Um, maybe not exactly, but um structured exactly this way all right so the first question here is in which of the following government does a leader have the most control over the citizens so just like joel did in the chat box i would like you to do the same so in which of the following government does a leader have the most control over citizens lives a oligarchy B, monarchy, C, dictatorship, D, democracy. C. C. Okay. All right. So um, let's, let's, let's answer the questions. I need more participation from others. And Vanilla, if you want to speak, you can go ahead. I see you raising your hand. Every citizen can place proposals on the ballot on it, and a proposal becomes law if the majority votes for it. So if it's direct democracy, remember I talked about direct democracy and in direct democracy or representative democracy. Okay. Stanisha, thank you. I can follow now. Number two, we have about three questions or four. Yeah, three questions in number two. And the instruction says each characteristics, read each characteristics of a democracy in the space and indicate whether each characteristic is found in a direct or representative democracy. Use D for direct democracy and R for representative democracy. Okay, so dash in dash, every citizen can place proposal on the ballot and the proposal becomes law if the majority votes for it. So what is the answer there? Is it D? Are you putting D for direct democracy or are you putting R for representative democracy? So choose your options. The next, the next is dash or in dash, delegates represent the wishes of the voting citizens. Is it in direct democracy or in representative democracy? In dash. 
delegates represent the wishes of the voting citizens. Of the voting citizens. Is it in a in, is it in a direct democracy or in a representative democracy? I would really love more participation. More participation. Come on, guys, let's do it. Yeah, D. Somebody said D. Okay. Yeah, more participation. I go to the third question under number two. Dash power to veto laws rest with the citizens themselves. Power to vote veto laws rest in the citizens themselves. Okay, thank you, Joel. Yeah, DR. Okay, you are missing one. It's many one. Yeah, on that two, you have three. You have three questions there. Okay, so we move to the next. We move to the next. That will be number three. What is the form of government of the United States? And each of the 50 states, what is the form of government of the United States and each of the 50 states? So in the United States, we have, we have other states. Okay, so they all practice together, they practice a form of democracy. So what is the form of democracy they practice? Is it representative democracy? Is it direct democracy? Is it parliamentary democracy? That's number three. Or is it presidential democracy? Listen to the question very well. It's quite trickish. The questions are quite trickish. So if you don't pay attention, you might miss it. So you have in number three, what is the form of government the United of the United States and each of the 50 states? A, representative democracy, B, direct democracy, C, parliamentary democracy, and D, presidential democracy. I'm only seeing Stanisha and Joel's response. Okay. Okay, good. Type on the chat box. Let us get your answers. Number four, which of the following is a modern example of direct democracy? Which of the following is an example of a direct democracy? Okay, so I'm going to call. I'm going to call two persons now, and I would expect you to give me your answers, since probably you can chat on. Yeah, so Mr. Gregory, can you try? Um. Yes, I would say um, presidential democracy. Okay, that's for number what? D. That's for number D. Okay, let's start from number one. Oh, okay. Together okay. now. Um, yeah, number one. Okay. What's the answer? Uh, representative democracy. Um, no, that'll be number one. Number one, number one. No, no, you say, oh, okay, okay, start, the start from number one. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, it's a, in which of the following government does a leader have the most control of citizen's mm -hmm. life? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, I don't see it word because it's move. I would say um C. Dictator C. C. Dictator C. Okay. Okay. Um, the other okay. one number yeah number two. Bro, read each characteristic of the democracy and the space. I don't see it. It's move. Okay, can you see it now? Which, oh, yes, yes. Read, read, read each characteristic of a democracy and the space, indicate we, whether each uh, characteristic is found as a direct representative democracy. Use D for direct democracy and all for representative democracy. Match every citizen can replace proposal and the following proposal become uh, low and the uh, it's a uh, I would say that is a um I would say that is D. Okay. Direct democracy. Okay. It isn't say like a legislature vote. It isn't so citizens elect a legis. That is represent. That is all. Okay. That's all. The, okay. okay. The next all one right. is all. Mm -hmm. Delegate represent okay. the wish of the vote. Delegate represent the wish of the vote voting citizen. Um, that is direct democracy. That is D. Okay. Mm -hmm. Power, power to. Um, I don't really see this. It's power to vote. Power to veto. To veto. Oh, veto. Yeah. It allows rest which the citizen themselves power to veto the citizens. Um, that could be um, a D. That could be D. Because, uh, yes, that could be D. I don't really understand it, but I will take D. Okay. There All right. Person. Thank you, Gregory. Yes. Thank you, Gregory. So I will just ask the next person um stanisha can you give it a try the next two questions three and four are you free to talk or you rather type in Okay, I've seen your answer to number four. I've not seen your answer to number three. Stanisha. together okay so number one you have the question in okay three c thank you stanisha thank you thank you Over citizens like and dictatorship and dictatorship. There is so much control over citizens' lives. All right. The the the, the whoever is in charge 
control the political, the social, and the military. So it's 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 a C. Then in number two, you have every citizen can place proposal on the ballot, and a proposal becomes law if the majority vote for it. Yes, in that system, it is called direct democracy. Yeah, direct democracy. That so is D. Then the next one, citizens elect a legislature to rule the country. Citizens elect, okay, a legislature to rule the country. That's representative. Okay, I've not gotten to number three. I will get there. It's an issue. Okay, so. This in the next citizens country and the next represent the wishes you know hello please confirm if you can hear me Stanisha, can you hear me now? Please, can anyone else hear me? Please confirm you can hear me so I can move forward. Okay, better. All right. So um, the next question is: Delegate represents the wishes. Delegate represents the wishes of the voting citizens. Okay, that's that's R, right? That's R. Then the next is power to veto laws rests with the citizens themselves. Okay, now not to the representative, not to the delegate, but to the citizens themselves. That's direct democracy. Okay, so where citizens are, are directly involved in policy making in, in, the, in the legislation of laws and rules, it is called direct democracy. Okay, so I am involved. I, I, I vote. I vote what, you know, in the decision, right? But when this vote or this decision is made by someone else, whom I voted for, okay, it's called representative democracy. Now, we go to question three. What is the form of government of the United States and each of the 50 states? Now, this is very tricky, very tricky, because someone will choose presidential democracy because, of course, you have the U.S. president, right? But that's not the answer, okay? Because in the 50 states, we don't have presidents in the 50 states, right? So it is representative democracy, okay? So in the federal, at the federal level represented by the president, you have the, you have the, you have a, fed, a representative democracy. At the state level, you also have um, representatives who are heads of each of those states, all right? So, the answer is A, number three, pres representative democracy. And number four, which of the following is a modern example of direct democracy? Hmm. Now, you have what we call New England Town Meeting. It's not Athenian democracy because we are talking about modern example. Yeah, assuming we say, it's we we'll just put it casually, which it would be the perfect example. Then in Athenian democracy could come in, but we are talking about modern example of direct democracy. So Athenian democracy does not make the list. State legislatures does not make the list. School boards does not make the list because you have representatives on the school boards, 
right? But in town meetings or in town hall meetings, you have representatives, you have people directly, not just represent, not representatives now, people directly making in their community. So an example of that is New England town meetings. Okay, so if you didn't get it, that's your correction I've just done. So you get to know it. So now I want to run through this. Stress on what we have both discussed in the introduction and the various exercises we have done. Okay. Um, here you have a list. In the slide you have seen now, you have a list of you have a list of the different forms of government. So we want to really explore the good the good uh, what makes them good and what make we will with it that type of government is anarchy okay so the bad thing about this type of government is that people have no protection from each other so you can just wake up one morning and decide to take your take your neighbor's car and it's fine everyone can do whatever they want anyway so nobody has there's no protection for each other or other nations so imagine there is anarchy the world is practicing anarchy or uh, two neighboring nations are practicing anarchy. Okay, you see that Do whatever they want. Talk about us together to be one. Decide. Decisions are quick. The bad thing about monarchy is that one person is in charge, means the ruler has power and people do not. So in the monarchy system, you have two class of people: the royals and the commoners those that are from the royal home and those that are commoners and then the monarch the king is in charge all right now in, in in the ugly thing about um the monarchy is that he can the ruler can hurt the people because of their power yeah so that's just um one of those the ugly thing about monarchy the next is oligarchy in oligarchy, a group of people are less. The good thing about oligarchy is that a group of people are less likely to be exploited by a single bandler. So, in a in a in a system of government where there are there are few powerful people, or where you have five, six to ten powerful people who are ruling the place, it is difficult for one bandler to emerge in an oligarchy right so and the, the bad thing about the bad thing about oligarchy is that various leaders may not agree and indecisiveness may leave the people vulnerable so um they could be uh, there's a there's a quote that says when two elephants fight the grass suffers so um what does what that means is that where two powerful people are in disagreement the people the 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 population who suffers are the people without power oligarchy the bad thing about it the ugly thing about oligarchy is that a bad group of rulers may take advantage of the people for their own benefit then you go to direct democracy which we just discussed in direct democracy you people are completely in control of their governments people can the bad thing is that people can be divided and indecisive or take advantage of minority groups yeah 
So for every decision, for every decision made, there are people that would disagree and there are people that would agree. And majority always gets it its way and oppress some people. So in an, a dead democracy where majority carry the votes, and we know that it, it is not every time that the majorities are right. So in such system of government, um, we we could have we could have a situation whereby the majority suppresses the minority. Then you have the republic. Okay, the government exists because people choose and replace its representatives themselves. So when you hear republic, you are talking about representatives, representative democracy, right? So don't be confused when you see direct democracy and you not see um, representative democracy. That's what we call a republic. It's a government that exists because people chose and replaced representatives themselves. So if the people do not pay attention, violence may take power. So the bad thing about a republic is that if you refuse to vote the right people or if you refuse to pay attention to how you are being governed, there's, there's the likeliness that the bad one representatives may become corrupt. Right? The good thing about the bad thing about it is that people have no or rulers may take everything away from the people. Um, one of the countries practicing totalitarianism in the world today is North Korea. If you have heard of North Korea, I'm sorry if you're from there, but um, you, you, you see North Korea, there's totalitarianism, there's absolute control of the people and all of that. Okay, so I think, um, let me see what I still have to share with you before we call it a day. So you will get the slides. So this is another question you will need to answer. So do well to answer them and, um, and practice on your own. So in our next class, we are going to look at the basic principles of American constitutional democracy. Uh, yeah, so, so our, our basic take from all of this is the fact that we have different so this is going to be more or less like uh, and, and later do it on your own. To answer the front decision made by elected representative, decision made by all citizens as a body, policies favoring low taxes and economic growth. Okay, so you go to number two and then you go to. Number three. So, oh my God. Are we done, guys?
Is the lesson over? I think he has a problem with his connection. Oh, okay. So are we going to wait for him? Oh, he joined. He joined. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Hello, can you hear me, everyone? Yes, sir, yes. we can hear you. Okay, so please, can you see? Can you see my screen? No, no, I can't see it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, I can take questions now. I just want to show you um, project the assignment, or probably I would um, I will send you the 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 video, the video recording, so that you can you can get it. Okay, so um, okay, so this is your assignment here. If you can screenshot it, that will be fine. So just screenshot it, read and answer the questions, and uh, maybe in, in our next class, in our next class, we will discuss it. I will pick up from here. Please do not mix next class, uh, so you don't get um, you don't get lost when we introduce a new a new topic. Okay, so um, any questions for me? You can unmute your mic and ask. Okay, when is the next class? Okay, we communicate that at the Telegram group uh, and the WhatsApp platform. Thank you. Any other question? All right. So I think there's no question for me. So this is where I say you do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, sir. Um, you enjoy as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. We learned a lot today. <laughs>